hello everyone so welcome to a new video so in this i am going to just briefly uh, touch upon the topic of uh, ratio analysis that is normally done in uh, financial uh, accounting uh, subject so the ratio analysis is used for analyzing the various uh, uh, ratios of various accounting terms and each one has a significance but right now uh, i am not going into a detailed explanation of what it means see for example current ratio what it means whether it is good or bad whether it should be more or less so all that uh, theory i am not going into i am just going into just the uh, mechanical uh, process of you know calculating these ratios given a particular example so what i have done uh, i have actually taken the snapshots of these ratios from uh, the textbook which i was uh, referring uh, that is uh, financial accounting textbook so uh, and there are several ratios so you don't have to remember the formulas of everything just keep a sheet like this and uh, write down all the formulas in one place and then simply you can uh, refer to them whenever you want so for example so you can just pause and uh, see this so these are called uh, liquidity ratios uh, uh, as i shown on the screen then we have solvency ratios okay so just sorry it did not uh, xerox properly but you can still make it out and then finally uh, the profitability ratios so again you can uh, have a look at this i will also try to keep the uh, uh, picture of this particular uh, ratios sheet uh, on my uh, on the description so that you can download and print this out okay so this is about um, a different uh, ratios now how do we apply so we have a sample uh, example problem so here uh, if you can see uh, we have a problem like this comparative statements uh, uh, of uh, larker tool essay are presented below so we have this uh, income statement with uh, various uh, parameters for 2019 december 31st and december 31st of 2020 so the end of two years i am having this income statements and then uh, we also have the back of this uh, the statement of financial position that means the assets and liabilities on either side i think you will still be able to make out these numbers uh, from there okay so now what we have to do is uh, uh, this is a, these are the questions uh, that are being asked so let us try to solve them uh, one by one so first uh, uh, question that is being asked so i have just adjusted the uh, camera a little bit so that it is little bit more zoomed in so here you can see uh, first question that is been asked is earnings per share and uh, it, it's already given here compute the following ratios way for 2020 okay so we are not worried about 2019 we are 2020 and weighted average ordinary shares were six uh, sixty thousand shares so the first question asked is earnings per share so simply uh, refer to the formula so here you can see earnings per share net income minus dividends divided by average common shares outstanding okay so average number of common shares outstanding now uh, prefer dividends so usually dividends will be there in the retained earning statement but the financial statements given to us uh, this is the financial position and then this is the uh, income statement so there is no information of uh, dividends given to us so assuming that dividends is uh, zero that means we do not pay any dividends so here we can do the calculation so first we start with the net income in 2020 192000 okay so i'll uh, take that so 192000 divided by then we have uh, the uh, in the see net income minus dividends divided by average common shares outstanding and uh, it is already given here weighted average ordinary shares were 60000 so I will just uh, use that 60,000. So here if I uh, do this calculation, so I can use a normal calculator for this. So 192,000 divided by 60,000. So I'm getting 3.2. Okay, so let me write it down 3.2. That is earnings per share. So it could be 3.2 dollars per share now return on ordinary shareholders equity okay so what is that return on equity so again 
uh, we can uh, uh, look for the formula here. So here we can see return on common shield or equity is same thing. Uh, net income minus preferred dividend divided by average common stockholders equity. So instead of number of shares, now I have to say stockholders equity. Okay. So what is the stockholders equity? You will find it in the uh, financial uh, position statement. So if I go to the financial position statement, so here we can see uh, equity. So equity is uh, 300,000. Okay. So I'll just uh, do that now here. So same 192,000 divided by 300,000. So this quantity again will be easy to calculate. So 192,000 divided by 300,000. So 0 0.64. Okay. So return. Sometimes these numbers are uh, uh, mentioned in percentage, and sometimes they are just uh, uh, left as a ratio. So I'll here I'll leave it as 0 0.64, or you can say 64% uh, uh, or something like that. Okay, so let's continue to the next one. Return on assets. Okay, so again same process. See the return return on assets is net income divided by average of total assets. Okay, so that's what we will do. So again the net income number is same. Uh, that is one ninety two thousand divided by average of total assets. Okay, so average of total assets. Okay, so again we can go to our uh, uh, financial position balance sheet. So here you can see the two, two different numbers are there 946 and then 852.80. So because these two different numbers are there, we need to take the average of this. So let me first do the average. Okay. So what is the average? So 946100 plus uh, 852800. 852 800 divided by 2. So I am getting 899450. Okay, so that, that is what I will write here 899450. So this one is my return on assets. So let me now calculate the return on assets. So 192000 divided by 899450. So I'm getting 21.34%. Okay, so here it is ratio 0.2134 or that is equal to 21.34 percentage. Okay. So uh, you can express it as a percentage. And here return on assets also mentioned here 21.3. So our answer is correct. Okay, so now current ratio. So current ratio is again very simple. So here if you see the formula for this is the liquidity ratio current ratio is current assets by current liability. So for the year of 2020. Okay, so what are my current assets? So again, uh, go into your uh, uh, balance sheet or the statement of financial position. So here you will get the current assets. Now there is a total of uh, current assets. Okay, so here you can see this number 345800. So this number is 345800. So this is the current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay, so look at the liabilities. So we have total of current liabilities 203500. Okay, so if you can see here, uh, I'm sorry, I have went out. Okay, 203500. So just refer to those uh, statements in the balance sheet, and then we can uh, do the calculation. Now let's do the current ratio. So that is uh, 345, 800, sorry, uh, 800 divided by 203, 500. So I'm getting 1.699 or I can make it 1.7. can round it off to uh, this thing. Okay, so this ratio is 1.7 or you can you, you, you can say 1.7 is to 1. Okay, so this is if you are in, in other words, if your liabilities is one, your assets are current liabilities is one current asset is 1.7. That means it is good. I mean, you are able to uh, you are having the ability to pay your current liabilities if required. Now asset test ratio, again, it is also called quick ratio. So asset test ratio uh, having a let's see. 
okay so in this uh, uh, this thing that uh, equation is not there but uh, let me write down so acetate ratio is nothing but your current so i'll write it here acid test ratio so this is your current assets minus inventory so divided by current liabilities so this is a short term capability to pay your uh, debts so let's do this so what is my current assets so again current asset is same uh, 3 4 5 800 minus current liabilities okay so what are the current li see in other words you can also do this uh, you can also add accounts receivable short term investment and cash so these three things you can add or from the total current assets you can remove this uh, number 110950 so i will do that 110950 and this whole thing again i will divide by current liabilities 203500 so let's see what this is so again very simple uh, i'll just do this calculation 345800 minus 110950 so this will be in the numerator divided by 203500 so i am getting 1.154 is to 1 okay so this is my uh, acid test ratio usually we compare these ratios with the industry average so uh, and then we'll comment on it but anyway let's continue accounts receivable turnover so let us see whether this uh, we have in this yes so here you can see accounts receivable turnover so simply net credit sales or simply you can say net sales divided by average net accounts receivable okay, so let's do that so first net sales will be there in the uh, uh, our uh, income statement so let's go to net sales so here net credit sales uh, is this number 1818500 Okay, so let me copy that number. So divided by average of your accounts receivable. So what is the average of accounts receivable? So now you go into the um, financial statement and you can see accounts receivable. So it's bit it's one out five seven fifty and one out two eight hundred. The average of these two. so let me calculate the average here so 105750 plus 102800 divided by 2 104275 so i am getting this uh, average uh, value so average accounts receivable is that so that number i will write here 104275 so this calculation now will give me accounts receivable turnover okay that means uh, your total sales as a fraction of how much you have to still receive okay so that that ratio so 1818500 divided by 104275 so i'm getting 17.439 okay or 17.4 as your ratio okay. next uh, we are having inventory turnover okay so let us do inventory turnover now so for inventory turnover the formula is like this cost of goods sold by average inventory okay so okay so inventory you can find it in the uh, financial statement so let's do the average of inventory so the average of inventory i'll write it here so one one zero nine five zero plus one one five five hundred divided by two so this is my average uh, inventory one one three double two five 
So. And uh, I have to find cost of goods sold. Okay, so let's see cost of goods sold. That will be there in the income statement. For the year 2020, we are having 1 million 1, 0 11,500. Okay. So let me write that here. So 1 million 11,500 divided by 113225. Okay. So this is the uh, ratio. Okay. So again, let me calculate. So I'm getting 8.93 as my ratio. Now times interest earned. Okay, so times interest earned is uh, solvency ratio. So the formula is uh, like this. So here we can see net income plus interest expense plus tax expense whole divided by interest expense. So this will tell you how much capable you are to pay your interest expense. Okay, so if your interest expense is dominating in the numerator, then this. Uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, compared to net income interest expense is more then your ratio will be less okay so like that you need more net income and less interest expense anyway so let's do this so let's simple net income ex interest expense tax expense are in the numerator so let us uh, do that okay so what is the net income here you can see for the year 2020 192,000 so 192,000 plus interest expense 15,000 plus uh, <coughs> income tax expense is 84,000. So this is my uh, numerator and then uh, denominator will have same 15,000. So this is the what we call as times interest earned. Okay, so let me now calculate this number. 192,000 plus 15,000 plus 84,000. Okay, and this is divided by 15,000. So 19.4 I'm getting. So this is, so 19.4 times. Okay, so that is the times interest earned. Okay, so let me mark that here 19.4 times. Now last two asset turnover. Okay, so now again we go back to our formula. So in the profitability ratios one of the ratio is your asset turnover ratio. So this is net sales divided by average of total assets. Okay, so let us do average of total assets first. So what is the average of total assets? So we can go back here and then find the total assets here, uh, which which of course will be equal to total liabilities plus equity. So anyway, so let's do the average here. So 946100 plus 852800. So divided by 2. So 899450. So this is the average of total assets. So this average of total assets will be in the denominator. Okay, so that is uh, and net sales will be in the numerator. So what is my net sales? So the net sales is uh, 1818500. Okay, so that is my net sales. 1818500 divided by 899450. Okay, so this is a calculation. So 2.02 .02 is the asset turnover uh, ratio. Okay. So finally, debts to assets ratio. So this is a simple uh, ratio. Um, total liabilities by total assets. So if you again look at the formula, total liabilities divided by total assets. So let's do that. So total lib. This is for the year 2020. So uh, 
total liabilities if you see 403500 okay so here you can see in the statement 403500 divided by total assets is 946100 okay so 946100 so this will tell how much the business is depending on uh, liabilities okay so if the liabilities are, are more this ratio will be more so divided by 946100 and finally this answer is 0 0.4264 or this is 42.6 percent okay. so finally these are the answers uh, that we are getting earnings per share all these things okay so uh, i think i'll i'll stop here and uh, most importantly this uh, this is the all the ratios okay so which uh, formulas which you should have handy to solve this kind of uh, question and even i believe in the exams also uh, nobody will expect you to remember all these uh, ratios so maybe in the exam you are allowed to look at the formulas i i don't know but uh, uh, the idea is to understand the comprehend the value of this you know what what 21.34 percent means return on assets so this thing has to be done by more in-depth analysis which maybe if time provides we can try in other videos so if you like this video please uh, press the like button and you can share with your friends thank you